Shalom Akoti, shalom my sister, hello everyone. It's been a while since I filmed a in front of camera video. I usually just do live streams, but I thought I would um, mix it up a bit with the um, kind of like the faith lessons we've been learning. So the things about Mystery Babylon and the Zodiac, those things are gonna stay presentations, but when I do these little videos on womanhood and our relationships and things like that, I was like, you know, it's a little bit more personal <laughs> if you see my face and uh, feel like we're having like a girl to girl chat. So this is really the beginning of the whole womanhood kind of series, although it can really be broken down into multiple things because for anybody who's gone through um, when when Dear Koti was C La B, I hosted a womanhood course, a free course, and um, all of that information is actually on the website, and the website's linked in the description box. So if you just go to the website and you go to the blogs tab, the blog tab, there is a section called womanhood, and it is literally all of the stuff that we've covered in womanhood 101 is there for you to for for viewing for free. Where are my words? Um, so you can go and you can read those. There's free downloadable, downloadable audios that come with each post. So definitely check that out. Um, but I wanted to kind of continue on. And at first I thought I was gonna just kind of remake Womanhood 101 with video style. Um, but in the sake of saving time, I'm gonna just direct you to the Womanhood section of the blog on the website so that you can go ahead and you can download those audios. You can read them all. Um, whatever fits your preference um, but I want to continue to push forward so really what I want to focus on in this little series I guess like making a lot of series is going to be really our relationship with our men so primarily you know our husbands or fiancés or boyfriends or if you are single you preparing yourself for the man that Yah has for you and this information actually is even applicable to all of the men in our lives. So our brothers, our cousins, our elders, our fathers, you know, our friends, our coworkers, our bosses, this information can apply to all of those relationships. It's really a way to, for man and woman to be able to work in harmony. Um, but because a lot of us tend to uh, obviously focus on our, you know, relationships with our husband or fiance or boyfriends, um, I really wanted to make that one of the first topics that we really talked about uh, because there's a lot of issues going on <laughs> with relationships these days. Um, so that's really the topic that we're going to be diving into for this series. And of course, like I said, we're going to have multiple womanhood series. You know, there's so much that can be said about being a woman. Uh, but I think one of the most important things is no learning and knowing how to function with men because Yah created us to be able to work together in harmony and in peace. So I was like, that's number one on the list. So don't mind me if I look down. I have like, I have my iPad because I actually created my own little mini presentation um, just with my own notes so that I remember things that I like to share in every video and just so I remember things that I wanted to touch on. And because I'm such a nerd, I also have things written down. So <laughs> bear with me today, girls, but we're gonna just, really today is, the focus of today is one, get, just giving you a little intro on what we're going to cover in this series. And then two, we're gonna define what love is according to the Hebraic perspective. So before we start, there's a gnat in my face, sorry. Before we start, um, like I always say in every video presentation, um, there is a Facebook group for Dear Koti and that Facebook group is very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, it, I have been terrible at Facebook groups. If you can hear my air conditioning, that's what just turned on. Um, I've been really, really bad at Facebook groups and at um, communicating in them. I've started many Facebook groups and this is the one that's actually stuck. And this is the one that's actually seeing growth. And when I say growth, I don't mean necessarily like there's tons and tons of people joining, but I mean that we're actually getting to know each other. And I'm noticing that women are starting to feel more comfortable posting within the group and encouraging each other and asking each other how they're doing. And, you know, that's really what I wanted to create a tribe and a sisterhood. And that's personally because for me, 
you know, I crave that. I crave that sense of having a bunch of girlfriends I can talk to about stuff. Um, especially when it comes to this walk. I post a lot of things on my personal profile, which is also linked in the description box if you want to be my friend. Um, but you know, unfortunately, not everybody is walking that same path. And so it can be a little discouraging at times when you share things and, and people really kind of want to debate you or they're not interested. And so to have a place where you can go where there are women who are like-minded, who are on the same journey and who are trying to grow just like me, it's like that is the epitome of what I wanted in a Facebook group. And so that's what is, is creating right now. That's what's being formed. And I'm just like... I'm so excited. Every day I'm excited to post in there. Every day there's a notification of somebody posting or commenting on something and it's just really awesome. And then on top of that, every Saturday we do a live stream together at 10 o'clock in the morning Central Standard Time and um, it's really open to you. So I've put it out there, you know, within the group, whatever topics you want to cover, let me know and I've had a list of topics that just keeps getting added to and every week I just randomly pick one and um, we talk about it for like an hour or longer and it's just awesome because I mean YouTube I can do live videos but there's just something more personal about the Facebook group so the link for that group is in the description box below and yeah I think that's all my announcements yeah so <laughs> um, oh I do always say this too in every presentation recently for anybody who is new to these to this channel so hello if you're new my name is Shanae you actually get to see my face for once unless you found me doing a live video or one of my older videos um, but whenever I refer to our Creator our God our Father I do call him by his name Yahua um, and that is how I pronounce his name I know some people do have slight variations but again that's how I pronounce it um, and that's really how I refer to him about 95% of the time. It's either Yahua or I say Yah for short. I've just gotten so used to saying Yah or Yahua. I just, I, I, it just rolls off the tongue now. And then for the Messiah, I actually refer to him either by his title of Messiah or his many other titles, or I'll call him by his Hebrew name, Yahusha. And again, you know, some people pronounce it differently and that's totally okay. I'm not going to sit here and fight with you on that right now or at all. Um, but just so that you know who I'm referring to. So Yahusha is the Messiah, our Messiah, and Yahua is our Creator, our Father, our Elohim, our God. So just getting that out of the way too. Okay, so background when it comes to this series. What can you expect from this series? So reading from my iPad, don't mind me, I feel like that's super, super rude. Um, this Womanhood series is a series of videos for women who want to have a better relationship with their man. This doesn't necessarily mean you're married yet. You can be a single woman wanting to prepare yourself for your husband to come. You can be a woman in a relationship who wants to better their relationship or a wife who wants to better her marriage. These are not my own teachings. This is something I wanna make a note of because all of these things are not new. These, this is the ancient path. These are the things that women of old did and that we've kind of just lost our way on. Um, so none of this stuff is like a new revelation or, you know, I've got a new idea on how to do this. No, 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 no. This is not me. This is coming from other women who were wise in their ways and me learning from them what what to do in a relationship and how to function in a relationship and how to actually function with a man. And so I want to put that out there. Um, one thing I highly, highly stress on this channel is that I do not consider myself a teacher or a leader. I consider myself to be walking right next to you. And I'm just as new to this path, um, just six months really into this new walk, and I'm learning every day and I'm constantly having to correct myself. And so anything I share on this channel, don't ever take it as the final say. Just take it as something that you should look into yourself and research and continue to learn. And you'll probably find that over time I end up changing you know, my, my stance on something or I correct myself because I get further clarification or a further revelation. One thing I've totally realized in this walk is that Yah reveals things progressively to us, so little by little. So while you may think you know it all, like 
three months in, you're going to find out the next day that you may completely know nothing. And so the best thing for me to say is that I know nothing. And so I'm continuing to learn every day and I want you guys to understand that as well. Again, I'm not the final say on anything or everything at all. <laughs> so that, that is up to ya. Um, he is the final say on everything. His word is the final say on everything. So everything that you do see on this channel, take it and research it yourself. Test the spirits yourself and see if it matches up with Yah's truth. Um, again, I try my best and again, I'm still learning, but I digress. So just some facts here. In 1950, married couples represented 78% of households in America. In 2011, so keep in mind, 2011 was what, six years ago. So that rate dropped to 48%. So that's 30% drop. All right. So over 50% of marriages in America now actually end in divorce. So this is a problem. This is the problem that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. So our generation, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of people in our generation are kind of like sidestepping marriage and they're kind of just downplaying it. And to them, it's literally just a piece of paper. Um, and our generation tends to look at it almost like a disadvantage these days. It's not something that is, you know, exactly, nobody's excited about it for sure. You know, most people don't want to get married at this point. Um, and I think part of that is just one, we've seen a lot of bad relationships growing up. We've seen, we've been exposed to a lot of stuff, um, whether it's in the entertainment industry or whether it was in our own homes. Um, that really kind of discouraged us. But two, we've also really lost sight of who we are and, and somebody's calling me. There we go. Okay, so I should actually, I don't even know where my phone is. <sighs> Put my phone on silent. How about that? Okay, so um, I've also just noticed, I mean, I'm going to speak specifically about the women um, just because I am a woman and so obviously I can't speak for men. Um, but as a woman, I can tell you that I haven't, I don't feel like many of us are trained in how to be a woman. And this is something that goes back to the Hebraic perspective and how, how our, how the children were raised back then. So, I mean, truly back then, the, the women really did the most of the child raising. Of course, the men participated, but as we talked about in Womanhood 101, the role of the mother is really to raise and teach the children and how to walk in Torah. And um, over time, you know, with the Hellenization of a lot of things, so stuff that we've been learning about in the Zodiac series and the Mystery Babylon series, you know, over time you've had um, pagan religions and pagan thoughts kind of take over the Hebraic, you know, the, the true faith. Let's just call it that. It took over the true faith and the true way of doing things, the way that our ancestors did things and begin to Hellenize them and turn them into whatever that religion was at the time or culture. And so the primary one that really influences us now is the Roman culture or the Greek culture. And so we've completely westernized our way of thinking. We've gotten away from that whole Eastern way of doing things and thinking. And so I really think that that's damaged us as women because especially when it comes to me, I'll be honest, I, I, when I first got into relationships growing up, I didn't really know how to be a woman. And um, I feel like a lot of women that, I've look, that I look up to or that I know, we're in the same boat where we are just learning as we go. And again, that's because we've lost our way of how we originally used to do things of your, your mother would teach you how to be a woman. And if you were, um, you know, a boy, your, your mother would teach you how to be a man according to Torah and according to Yah's instructions in his word. And so we're trying to claw ourselves back to that now. Um, but I think that's really put us at a disadvantage. So, um, I'm not saying, because I know one thing when I do start to talk about being a woman and things like that, one thing I want to say is that this is not at all like just the blame of the woman. You know, disharmony and, and chaos between relationships comes on both parts. 
But as a woman, you have to realize that you do have a lot of influence both over your man and your family. Um, you can literally walk into a room and change the whole dynamic and vibe of a space just based off your current emotions and your current moods. So I, as a woman, am taking responsibility for how my relationship with my husband and with my brother and with my father and if, with my cousins and my uncles and elders and things like that, I'm going to take responsibility as a woman for my relationship with those people because I know that I have a large amount of influence just as they have a large amount of influence. I can't just sit there and expect somebody else to change without first changing myself. And so this isn't this series isn't to like belittle women or to make you feel like you're not doing enough or that you know the man doesn't have to change but it is a wake-up call almost to saying okay well if I change the way that I act towards my man it's going to change the way that he reacts to me you know um, and that's something that we're gonna dive into when we talk about love so the first step to a happy relationship, a happy marriage, is to understand that everything is governed by laws. So you have your laws of nature, your laws of science, your laws of art, your laws of everything, right? Um, and that to live in harmony with you know, the other person, in this case with marriage, or even in life, you have to live in harmony with the laws. You have to follow those laws. Um, and if you don't follow those laws, you end up having chaos, right? So it's the same with marriage. And our law for really how we interact with people and how we live our life is Torah, uh, which if you don't know, Torah is the first five books of the, um, of the Bible. So Genesis, Leviticus, no, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy um, would be what we consider the Torah. And honestly, it is literally a lifestyle where Yah is instructing us on how we are to live our lives so that we can love him and our neighbors because those are the top two commandments <laughs> or rules of the constitution of this kingdom right so <clears throat> these are the i mean we're not going to go i want to put this out there we're not going to be going like deep into torah that is something i want to do on this channel i do want to begin to um do more like live videos during the week where Every time I do a Bible study, because right now my husband and I are kind of working our way through Torah. And so anytime we do a Bible study, anytime I kind of get something like really awesome or like a deeper understanding of something, I'm going to start doing more live videos where I share that with you. Um, I actually today just this morning did a, um, a study into the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. And so I'm almost like kind of done with that study. I'm going through and looking up some deeper meanings of words. But that's something that I'll be doing um, a live video on sometime this week, hopefully, uh, Yah willing. But um, we're not going to go super deep into Torah in this series. It's really going to be more of some of the basics of Torah when it comes to our relationship with men and with our husbands. And we're going to expand on that and kind of share different um, different kind of tips and actions and ways that we can act as women um, in order to kind of follow those laws of Torah um, and love our husbands, which again, we're going to cover in a second. So if this video is a little long, I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm not. We have to talk about this stuff. Um, okay, so there are three essentials to a happy marriage. So love, which is what we're going to define in a bit. Um, but love is the cornerstone of a happy marriage and really any happy relationship. Um, the art of awakening a man's love is not difficult. We tend to think it is, but it's not. And it's actually almost a natural instinct of ours. It's just gotten a little rusty over the years because like I said before, we've kind of gotten off the bat, uh, gotten off the bath, gotten off the uh, old beaten path of our ancestors. So if we can just kind of get ourselves back to the ancient old ways, um, we would definitely be, you know, shining up that little rusty spot there and being able to get back into harmony with our relationships. And this isn't to say that you're not having a perfect and awesome relationship. My my relationship with my husband is awesome and amazing. Um, but I will admit that, you know, even two years ago, I mean, it's exponentially increased and gotten better and better and better every year. Um, so, and we've been together six years. We've been married for two of them. And so, you know, every year it gets better and better. and so, you know, this is to say that even if you have a good relationship with your man now, it can be better. Trust me. 
So, <laughs> um, the problem when it comes to love. So again, we're a little rusty in that area as women and being feminine and um, understanding how to treat our man. And then two, we don't actually have the right definition of love. So again, that's something we're going to go into after I finish kind of giving you guys this little intro. Um, so we're also going, the second essential is self-dignity. So how you react and respond to criticism. You know, are you somebody who shrinks away and kind of goes and hides away and goes into your feelings? Um, do you, you know, get back at that person by saying something mean? Or do you just turn into a complete tornado? You know, um, because one, no man really likes an ugly temper, but a man also doesn't like a pushover or someone he can walk on. You know, a man wants somebody who, you know, knows who she is and isn't taken aback like when he says something rude, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't basically fly off the handle. Um, but he also doesn't want somebody who's going to victimize herself either. You know, it's almost like having a little spitfire, a little sassiness to you. Um, so that's one thing we're going to cover. And we're also going to talk about um, desires. So the worthy desires that both parties have in a relationship. It's not about being selfish. That's one of the biggest things I want to note. Um, so we're going to talk about how you can actually get the things that you need and desire without causing issues in the relationship. And this is something a lot of relationships go through when a woman wants something and the man says no and she does it anyway or vice versa. Or not vice versa because the man really has the final say. But when even when a man does things selfishly and it affects the family. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. Um, so again, although in this series we're primarily talking about your relationship with your husband, fiance, or boyfriend, these lessons again can be applied to any relationship. So father, son, brother, cousin, coworker, boss, elder, grandpa, the list goes on. Um, again, don't take any of these life lessons. I'm warning you guys, do not get offended by them. Don't take them. Um, don't take it as I'm like as I'm trying to tell you what to do or anything like that. Um, don't take these and try to use them unrighteously. So don't take them and try to use them to win over a man who's married or to do something that you know you should not be doing because that's not what these lessons are for. These tips are literally to help eliminate friction in your relationship and build harmony and build trust. So these lessons are about becoming an ideal woman from a man's point of view. So an ideal help me or help mate um, or a virtuous woman you know, who is the crown of her husband, um, the kind of woman that awakens a man's deepest feelings of love. And again, we're going to talk about what love really is. So just know when I say feelings of love, I'm literally meaning just like, I, I, I will distinguish between the actual verb love and then what our society can, you know, kind of thinks is love. So feelings of love is really kind of like our westernized idea. Um, and this is the one thing that women tend to crave all the time. Um, so again, lessons are not here to belittle us, point out our flaws, or offend or rub you the wrong way. They will not cause you to lose your dignity or freedom, but rather you will gain those and much more. So what will we learn? I'm going to just give you some bullets and then we're going to dive right into what love actually is. So we're going to talk about what the ideal woman is from a man's point of view, what men find fascinating in women, how to awaken a man's deepest feelings of love and tenderness towards you, how to understand men, their needs, temperament, and characteristics, how to treat a man when he's depressed in order to build his confidence and respect himself, how to cause a man to protect you, provide for you, and devote himself to you, how to obtain those things in life which mean so much things you are justified in having, how to bring out the best in your husband without pushing or persuasion or nagging or any of that, the feminine role and the happiness which comes with its fulfillment, the masculine role and the respect due to his divine calling, um, how to react when a man is thoughtless, unfair, and negligent, how to be attractive, even adorable when you're angry, how to keep a line of communication open in marriage so that a good feeling always exists, and how to gain true happiness in marriage while placing your husband's happiness as your primary goal. So, let's talk about love. So, there's two different... We're going to talk about the Western kind of love and then the Eastern kind of love. So quickly, the Western love is that love feeling. So um, representing that kind of form of tender, 
love a man feels for a woman and a love that a woman feels for a man. So this is really kind of dealing with your emotions. Um, it's spontaneous, warm, and tender. It's a feeling that a man experiences when he truly loves a woman. It's a feeling that can cause a man to feel fascinated with a desire to protect and shelter the woman he loves. It can also be intense, almost like a deep pain. And lastly, it can be almost like worship, but not. Clear line there, not. So examples of this love includes Jacob, um, who had the patience to work 14 years in order to marry Rachel. Um, you have Solomon's description of love, which is in the Song of Solomon. It's a like literal poem of his love for a woman and her love for him. Um, you have King Xerxes and his love for Queen Esther. And then you can go even all the way back to Adam in the garden with Eve and how he actually fell and ate the apple because of his love for Eve. Um, so that is, I mean, we're, you know, you really have the westernized feeling. And, you know, again, like I said, that's not truly the Hebraic understanding. So, again, I'm not an expert on on the Hebraic understanding of things. I myself is, am still learning Hebrew. So the notes that I'm going to share with you right now, I have learned from a woman named Hulda Dalweed um, on YouTube. Her channel is called Her Royal Roots. Um, I will link it down below. Um, but she's really, really awesome at teaching the Hebrew letters and being able to, you know, really teach the meanings behind them. And so she did have a video about the Hebraic, you know, the true Hebrew love, the true Hebraic meaning of love, because that's something that we completely just don't seem to understand in our Western thinking. And so it really blew me away when I first learned this months ago and it really changed the way um, that both my husband and I, you know, thought about love. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and share that with you today because I feel like just knowing what love is according to the Hebraic perspective and the Hebrew mindset and, you know, what the actual Hebrew word means, understanding the true definition of love according to Yah completely changes the way that you feel about your relationship um, because you may feel like you know well he doesn't really love me um, but that's because you're thinking in the western eyes he doesn't he's not showing you his feelings kind of love whereas the eastern hebraic yah thought has nothing to do with a feeling it is an action so love is not just it's yes it has a noun form but the form that the Hebrews typically used was the verb. So let's dive in. So the Hebrew word for love is ahab, which is a word, um, a verb. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're going to dive into the noun and everything too. And I'm going to try to see if I can put like an image over my face that shows the Hebrew letters so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so... You have um, the Aleph, the He, and the Bet, which make up the word Ahab. And this is the word for love, and the, this is the verb for love. So looking at the different letters and the meanings for each letter first, you have the Aleph, which is represented by the Ox, means power and means strength, represents a strong leader or a powerful person. Um, then you have the He, which is lo, behold, the. Um, it also has meaning when attached to other words. So it can be breath or breathing forth something into another. So this was really interesting um, that I learned from her because she kind of explained in a side note of example with the hey. So the letter hey in the Hebrew is um, like our English letter H. And so when you read the story in the Old Testament of Abraham and Sarah and how their names were originally um, Abram and Sarai or Sarah, um, Yah changed their names and he added a He to their names or an H to their names. So it became Abraham and Sarah. And um, when he did that, I mean, the explanation was awesome. So like I said, I'll link her video below because she's just really, really good at explaining this. Um, but so when Yah changed Abram and Sarah's names and added a He or an H, um, that was really like Yah's breath, giving, giving something to them, transforming them and elevating them higher to increase them 
as their different roles. So they were now taking on the roles of being the patriarch and matriarch or the mother and father of the Hebrew people through the promised seed, which we know was their son Isaac. Um, so they became mother and father of the nation. So by adding the hey or the H, Yah, Yah added and, you know, Yah gave them something extra. You know what I mean? Um, so... And another side note she had added was that, you know, this is why we're called Daughters of Sarah by Paul in the New, in the New Testament because she is the matriarch or the example for all women who come from this bloodline. So basically anybody who's in the remnant because we know the remnant comes from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, so I thought that was really, really interesting. So we know that hey means lo, behold, bring forth, and to give. So... Um, you have the olive, you have the hay, and then you have the bet, which means house tent or the nomadic tent floor plan or the womb. So also adding on to that, because this is all going to make sense in the end, um, there's numerology to everything in the Bible. So to every word, to every letter. So the, num the number represent the numerology or number given to the olive is one. The bet, which is the last letter, is going to be number two, and then hey is number five. So just keep all of this in mind. Okay, so the reason why I just gave you the numbers one, two, and five is because you have the word ahab, which means to love, and so you have the olive, the hay, and the bet. So you have one, you have two, you have one, you have five, and then two. And so when you look at the word love, using even when you see the numbers you know the numerology it's when one or the ox or the head of the family or the strong leader gives to number two right so being and you get that because you have the olive which is the ox or the power or the strength or the strong leader then you have the hay which means in this case to give uh, and then you have the bet which is number two right so um, an and so, and, and you get number two also because think of it this way, the bet represents the tent or the floor plan or the womb. So the womb representing the woman and the child and the family and the same thing with the tent representing the family or the home. So it's the idea of giving to multiply or increase. And so you have the one that gives to the two. So the definition of love, this definition of giving, of one giving to another to increase or multiply, both physically and spiritually, really kind of gets rid of that whole belief of I love you because you did something for me or I love you because I feel this way or I feel that way. Um, because love, again, is one person giving to another. So example would be Yah giving to his family or the husband giving to his family or the wife giving to her family. You know, that is what love is. It is a literal action of giving. It is not a feeling. It is not what can I get from you. It's what am I giving. And to be more specific, it's about giving Torah. So how do I want to put this? You're giving Torah, which means you're acting and living out the words of Torah to another person to increase and elevate them as a person and it's reciprocated back to you so again you are acting and living out the words of Torah towards somebody else in order to increase and elevate them as a person um, so it's bigger than just you know you and a man having sex and having a child you know it is you guys creating a seed and a righteous seed at that and raising that seed and participating in that seed and cultivating that seed and so it was just a really awesome example that she gave was gardening and so you garden when you garden you don't just put the seed in the ground and that's it you put the seed in the ground and you water it and when it starts to sprout you continue to make sure it's getting sunlight or you'll nourish it with um, things like I'm like drawing a blank right now and I have a garden sitting out on my patio. <laughs> but almost kind of like vitamins, but not vitamins. But you know what I'm like, like um, manure and stuff like that. You know, you want to add things to the soil so that you can begin to cultivate a strong fruit, a strong plant, right? So that it can give you righteous fruit or good fruit. Um, so 
you're giving Torah to someone else by living out Torah and helping to elevate that person in Torah and in Yah's instruction. Um, let's see, what other notes do I have? So, love is the process of being in a state of giving. And one thing I know is that if love stops being a functional part of a relationship, it's because the giving has stopped. So if you feel like the love is not there, that's why, because you guys are no longer giving to each other. Um, so we should never remove ourselves from the state of giving. And in order to give, you have to be connected to the source of giving. So this is something that we even talked about in Womanhood 101, where we as women have, we have our period every month, right? And that is a time that Yah has automatically given us so that we can plug back into our source, which is Him. Um, because the best way to explain it, which again, I would recommend you go and actually watch um, the womanhood or listen to the womanhood 101 um, course but as a woman you know we are built like a house right and we're built like a, a tent we're built you know like we're like the bed literally the womb the tent the home and so everybody's plugging into you and the problem is is if everybody's plugging into you it's draining your resources and so you have to plug in to your source and so one of the ways beyond Sabbath, which we should be participating in every week and observing and celebrating the Sabbath so that we can get that rest in Him and, um, you know, all of that other stuff. We also have our period or our menstruation time where we are to rest in Him and plug into Him and kind of reevaluate our life and what we're doing and all of this stuff so that we can then gain energy from our source and be able to give that energy back out to those who are plugging into us. Um, so it's the same with love, which is the act of giving. In order to give, you can't give from an empty cup, right? So you have to plug into your source. And the ultimate source of giving we know is, yeah, he's actually called himself love. So, um, and that's because he's the ultimate giver. And we already know that, right? So as we connect to Yah and we commune with him, we then have the abil ability and the opportunity to give forth from what he's given us. And then when we disconnect from him, that's when we begin to feel a lack in our lives and we have feel like we have less because we don't have the source of love because again, Yah is love. We don't have the source of love to actually feed into us and give it forth to others. Um, which when I heard that explanation, I was like, that really makes sense with everything else that, you know, with that was taught in Womanhood 101 and then just, you know, how anybody who preaches self-love in general says that you can't give out of an empty cup. Um, so another really cool thing that she had pointed out was that you have the word, the noun form of love, which is ahava, which is literally the same spelling of aleph, hey, and bet, but it has another hey at the end. So it'd be aleph, hey, bet, hey. And so again, that word is ahava. And Again, the numerology for the Aleph is one, the He is five, and the Bet is two. So when you add all of those letters up together in the word Ahava, you get the number 13. And then something she pointed out is that the word Ahad, which means one, also has the same numerology of 13 uh, because the letters are Aleph, He, and Dalit. And we know Aleph is one. Um, oh, it's not Het. He, it's Het, sorry. So Aleph, Het, and Dalit. So Aleph is one, Het is eight, and Dalit is four. So those add up to 13 as well. And so it was really awesome when she made that connection um, because she was showing how love is one or love and unity are within a family and relationship. So when you love, you become one. The act of loving makes you one. And the reason that she had pointed this out is because you have in, um, in Torah where Yah teaches to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I had never thought of it this way until she had brought it up. But the number one reason for that is because in our fallen nature, we would never love someone else more than we love ourselves. That is just common sense whenever you meet a person. You know, people love themselves and love hearing themselves talk more than anybody else. And so loving your neighbor as you love yourself is actually Yah telling you to look at yourself and then look at your neighbor as yourself so almost like a mirror so when you begin to see the other person as you you will love them as you as much as you love yourself 
And so it really changes the way that you care for someone and give to someone because now you're seeing them as yourself. It's, a, it's almost like a mirror, like I said. So in a relationship, you're to look at that person like you and nobody has a problem giving their all to themselves. So you have to see your family, your husband, your, your boyfriend, your fiance, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your grandpa, your elder, everybody, you have to see them as you. Um, and be, so when you start to see them as you, they become a reflection of your love. And so this really kind of brought it all together because it really showed that they're literally a reflection of what you give to them. And so if you have a negative relationship with somebody, it's you need to look at your love for them. Are you actually loving them? Are you giving to them? Are you living and acting out Torah towards them so that you can then elevate that person and bring them up? If not, then that's why you're having that negative conflict with that person. And so this really just blew my mind because with all of the things I was learning about how to be a better wife or how to have, you know, how to the actions that I can take on my end in order to make the relationship better, all of the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you in this series all fell perfectly into that idea of loving someone as you love yourself and seeing them as you and giving giving them your all like you would give yourself your all because you're seeing them as a mirror of you. And then on top of that, when you are having that negative relationship with somebody, it's because you're not giving. The giving has stopped. And that in order to give, you're giving yourself, you're, you're, you're literally acting out Torah towards somebody else. You're living Torah in your life and you're treating them the way that Torah teaches you to treat them. And so in, in that action, you're lifting that person up and so that person is elevated and so they reciprocate it back to you. And that just blew my mind. I was like mind blown. And so all of the actions from, from here on out of the things that we're going to learn of being the ideal woman it's really going to make a lot of sense now that you have that full definition of giving and, and, and of love and that it's the action of giving um, because that's what it's all about. It's not about what I can get from my husband or how he makes me feel. It's about what am I giving to him every day? Am I acting out in Torah towards him every day? Am I following the Torah and what Yah says that I need to treat him as my husband you know am i being submissive to him am i treating him as i would treat myself am i loving him am i giving to him as i would give to myself because i give myself everything so i should be giving him everything as well so anyways love by giving. hey 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 it's okay i'm dog sitting hey 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 no 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 hush hush it's okay lay down Come on, come on, come on, lay down. Good boy, good boy. So I'm dog sitting. For those of you who have been on this channel for a while, you guys may remember my little my little dog. He's not a puppy anymore, but I still call him one. Dollar. And so uh, I'm dog sitting him this week, and he tends to be a little high stress whenever he hears any sort of noise. And so me being in an apartment, he can hear when people walk up and down the stairs outside to get to their apartments and he can hear like if people knock on their doors or sometimes he'll hear, you know, dogs outside and stuff and he immediately, you know, he feels the need to bark because he, he gets high stress in these kind of situations. But it's okay because you're getting better every day, right? Yes. And this is literally what he does all day. He just sits here and lays there. Um, so anyway, so love by giving. You love in order to multiply. You give according to Torah and not according to what you think they deserve or what you think they should get or how you feel so that that person becomes a reflection of Torah and thus a reflection of Yahuwah. That is the most beautiful description of love I could have ever, ever heard in my life. So in this series, we're going to be talking about how to love our husbands or how we can give to our husbands. So this doesn't literally mean you giving them money or anything like that. We're really going to be diving into a lot of different ways that we can give of ourselves to our husbands in order to create that harmonious relationship. Um, and so that we both can be extremely happy and continue to grow in Torah and continue to grow in Yah and um, just continue to grow, I guess. So that's really it for today. I really just wanted to kind of go over the definition of love because again, 
the Western definition is not correct. It's just not. According to Yah, it is just not correct. And so we want to begin to approach our relationships and approach love from the way that our Creator approaches love. And so with this mindset and telling you all the stuff that we're going to be covering in this series is really just going to make so much sense to you. And I'm going to try my best throughout the series to continue to remind you what love actually is. Um, so yeah, don't get caught up in the, well, I don't feel like that's fair, or I don't feel like this, or I don't think he deserves that kind of thing. Get caught up on the idea of giving. And like I said, love by giving, love in order to multiply, give according to Torah, so that that person becomes a reflection of Torah, and thus a reflection of Yah. So with that, my sisters, I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> See, using that Western term again. But I, I do love you because I do give, obviously, to you. Um, and I really hope that, excuse me, you continue to grow in Yah um, and in His Torah.